Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show from freshly bright and early morning to Australia. It's 5.30 in the morning here. I'm in my bedroom. You may have noticed. Hi. Hi, Helen. Hi, Sophia. So, I think I called today's uh, session. I want to call it a session. <laughs> Show. <laughs> You're the first people I've talked to today, all right? So, hi, Saskia. Hi, Erna. Um, I think I called it something like, what if you didn't have to separate from other people that have your own back? Now, I've had, <laughs> this has been, <laughs> good evening. Uh, hi, Nikki. This has been a really intense couple of weeks for me. I've been in class, uh, the COP and SOP, and then a facilitator's class just finished, and I have another class coming up this weekend, and so there's been that. And I made some massive changes to my life that also made it even more intense for me. And I put an invitation out to do some distance Symphony of Possibility sessions, so I've been doing a bunch of those, and there was a lot of people in the sessions, they came into the sessions going, you know, if you could get anything out of this session, what would it be? And it was like, I want to have my own back. And it came, it, it came up in, you know, a lot of different contexts. Like, I want to have my own back with these crazy people that are being crazy. And I want to actually not reject me and throw me under the bus, you know, so that in the middle of this crazy, hi, Claire, hi, guys. <laughs> so nice to see you. Hi, Maureen. And then, you know, it came up in other ways of like, I actually want to choose what I want to do with my life. And, you know, and move forward with what I know is true for me. And, um, sorry, the hair in my lip gloss, oh my God. <laughs> and then for me, it's been this whole thing of like, I, I am gonna have what I know and I'm gonna choose, thank you Saskia, I'm gonna choose what I know and have what I know and have the life that I wanna have, even though it doesn't look like, no matter what it looks like to anybody else. And on top of that, I'm going to stay present with myself in every single 10 seconds so that I'm not separating from me, trying to look for feedback in other people's worlds to see if I did the right thing or not. So I think I'm going to start there today. Let's see where we go. If you guys have any questions about this topic, please put them in the chat in the, in the comments, and I'm so happy to talk about them. Hi, Dorothy. But like, what does it mean to have your own back? I think that's the thing, the first question to start with. What does that even mean? And what the way I would look at that is like for me having my own back is oh fuck it's really functioning from the ten commandments of access if I'm honest so it's like the ten commandments of I'm not gonna remember all of them I'm gonna forget them. I even took a test on them yesterday but if you haven't yet checked out the ten keys to total freedom um, it's a telecall it's a book by access and it's it's amazing and I would say that book plus living beyond this oh <laughs> see living beyond distraction backwards um, those are the two books that I would check out, like go immediately, make them your Bibles and, and they will really, really change your life. So what my practice was over this last two weeks, what my practice of having my back was, was staying present with me and not rejecting me for anything, for any reason. And in here, let me tell you why that was, took more work. Um, than it might have normally. And I, one of the things I realized that I naturally did, I just did, was I would go into other people's universes, universe, their worlds, to get feedback for how I was doing. And now sometimes we call that taking everything personally, right? So like if some, I remember actually my friend Heather was staying with me um, during this whole two weeks and we had a few days in between classes and both of us were really, we were changing a lot, we were going through a lot and so she had one morning where um, she, I didn't even know she was home. She was staying downstairs. I didn't know she was home. She came upstairs for a minute and she wasn't chatty. And Heather and I are really good friends. Like we can chat and talk and drink wine and laugh and she was not chatty. So I was already going through something. She wasn't chatty. I think we had like a mini 30 second small talk. She went back downstairs and I was like, God, I wonder if there's like, I wonder if there's something wrong. I totally, I went into her world to see what was going on, then I made some projections and ex I made some decisions about what I was perceiving in her world, because there was stuff going on, and then I made it about me. And that's one of the first places that I noticed where we instantly, 
abandon ourselves. We instantly withdraw from ourselves. We instantly re reject ourselves. We instantly, and then, and not only do I reject myself in that moment, but the moment you reject yourself, you have to, of necessity, reject and separate from someone else. And, um, and so in that moment, I didn't have my own back. I didn't have allowance for what I had going on. I didn't have allowance for what she had going on. I went to conclusion about what she had going on and that it meant something about me and I used that to separate. Now, that only lasted like, I don't know, maybe that day. And then the next day she needed a ride and I forgot and I ended up messaging her. And I'm like, hey, is there something going on that we need to talk about? She's like, oh, no, not at all. I just have a lot going on for me. And that's one of the first places that I really started to see this pattern in my life of like, hi, Frank, hi, Michelle. <laughs> um, so I'm talking about having your own back today. So if you guys have any questions, just like throw them in the comments and I'll just, I'll riff on them. So having my own back for me is literally not choosing that, is choosing something else. So let me let me give you an example of what, what I could have chosen with Heather in that moment. And this is something I started choosing a couple days ago with everybody. And that is allowance. Now, we talk a lot about allowance. It's a big topic. It covers all bases. Um, but what allowance is, is where everything is, hi Kalpana, where everything is just an interesting point of view. But for me, I, I'm taking that, I'm gonna see if I can take that a little bit farther because that's the gist of the thing. But like, what allowance has been for me in the last two days has literally been having so much gratitude and space for whatever's going on in my world. So like, I've had a lot of shit going on. I've gone to conclusions, I've had projections and expectations, I've been choosing, I've been being present, I've been abandoning myself. I've been, <laughs> like it's, it's run the whole gamut. And, um, but like two days ago, again, something occurred. I was sort of upset about it and I knew I was upset about it. And I was talking to one of my friends and she's like, Hey, how much allowance can you have for you right now? How much allowance can you have for you? Cause I was like, well, I said this thing and then they didn't respond and I was looking for a response and now I'm realizing I was looking for a response. And so now I'm looking at what agendas I had. And it was just this like, you know how we're like so smart and we have all these words and these tools and now we're looking for where we're functioning so that we can function better. And then we go into the wrongness of us because we're doing that. You guys know anything about that? <laughs> so she goes, how much allowance can you have for you right now? And I realized as soon as she said that to me, I was like, oh my God, that's a choice too. It's just as much a choice to wake up in the morning. Yesterday, I woke up in the morning, it was 6 a.m. I'm in bed, day hasn't even started yet, and I'm head tripping. I couldn't even like tell you exactly what it was about. Everything, it was head tripping about everything. So I caught myself, and what do I mean by head tripping? I mean like you're in your head, you're ruminating on stuff, you're looking at yesterday, maybe looking into the future, trying to figure stuff out, but you don't realize you're trying to figure stuff out, but you're in your head doing it. And by the time you realize it, it's like 6.30 and you've done nothing, but nothing, right? And and you're now you're gonna be late for your next appointment because you've been freaking fretting in bed for, anyway, so I caught myself. <laughs> and I'm laying in bed, realizing this is what I'm doing, and I'm like, Okay, so where are you right now? I'm in the past. I was in yesterday. Well, the past is gone. I don't know about I mean, yesterday is not here anymore. In fact, that moment's gone, and now that moment's gone, and now that moment. So all I literally have right now, right now, right now, right now, is this present moment, which is why we say in Access, you got 10 seconds to live the rest of your life. What are you gonna choose? So I'm laying in bed. I'm realizing I could spend another 15 minutes in the past if I wanted to and get nothing accomplished or I could choose something else. And it was that simple. I was like, I can either do this or I can choose something else. What would you like to choose? And I was like, I looked outside and I'm in Australia right now. And if I turned the camera around, you can see the ocean from my room. And I was like, oh, I'm in Australia. It's a beautiful day. I'm about to go to class. I'm gonna choose to be happy. And so what did I do? I literally pulled my awareness into my body I got present with my body because my body's here right now. It's touching this blanket. It's like fondling the screen. It just touched your face, right? I'm here right now. So I was like, I pulled my awareness back into my body, into the present moment. And I was like, hey, what grand and glorious adventures can we have today? And who am I today? And what am I capable of today that I haven't yet acknowledged? My whole day was different. My whole day was different. And one of the other questions I asked is like, how much allowance can I have for myself today? What would it be like to be allowance for me today? Now, listen, I don't know if I've ever asked that. I'll be honest with you. I've talked about allowance and all, but I don't know if I've ever asked that. And the thing about when you ask for something, when you ask a question, 
you get the awareness of what it's going to take. And a lot of times when you ask a question like that, you go to being it immediately because there's these questions aren't to get answers. I mean, I've heard that before. Questions are for awareness. And so as soon as you ask that and you're truly actually asking, right? It's not just like a question with a period at the end with a question mark pretending to be a question. It's actually like, hey, what would it take to be allowance for me today? That's it. Got up, did my hair, did the thing, went to class. I think I had 18 sessions before I went. And then it was so cool because what occurred with that, in, it, I'm going to call it intense allowance for me. I wasn't in anybody's worlds anymore. Nobody else's worlds were relevant to me. And everybody's got shit going on all the time, by the way. And they might have shit going on about you. But the thing about it is, is like, that's, that's, the, that's the moment. That moment where you're lying in bed, you're head tripping, and you're going, hey, what other choices do I have here? Is the moment that you get to choose to have your own back. Because when you're in the past, ruminating on all that shit, and you're in the future trying to figure stuff out, you're actually not being present with you right now. And I have to be honest, like, I kind of like through being present out with the metaphysical bathwater, I was like, you know, like, I don't meditate, I don't, you know, presence, what's that? Now I'm discovering it's like incredibly valuable. <laughs> like being present with me is, is what it is, you know? So it's being present with what is, it's being present with what you know about the future, and it's being present with what you want to create. Because I don't know about you, but a lot of my life has been spent trying to fix what's already happened. And that, that assumes so many things. It assumes you're wrong, first and foremost. If you're trying to fix what, what, what has already happened, you're already assuming that you're wrong. That just comes from a place of like, I'm wrong, I did it wrong, now I gotta fix it, right? I gotta fix me, I'm my biggest problem, right? I gotta fix me, I gotta fix the shit, I gotta fix this thing. What if you didn't have to fix anything? What if you, you chose what you chose because you chose it and now you just get to choose again? And so that's one piece of having your back is actually being that intensity of allowance for you and not trying to go into other people's worlds to make you fit according to what you think they're doing because they got their own shit going on that you're making assumptions about that doesn't have anything to do with you. And when you do that, like that's the first place that you abandon you and you leave you. To, 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 to do something you've decided is more valuable than being present with you. So that's just something I want to put into your universe of like, hey, what, where are you doing that? What could you do to change it? Like what practice could you put in place for you that would actually like change that for you? Okay, so that's sort of part one to this. And then part two to this that I really wanted to go into was like so many times when or going through major change or we know stuff has to change or whatever, the first place we go to is should I leave or should I go? Should I leave or should I stay or should I go? Sorry. <laughs> yes. Should I leave or should I leave? <laughs> Those are our two choices. <laughs> well, most of the time that is, that is what we're looking at. It's like, you know, whether we're in a relationship or with whoever, like you're in a relationship with somebody you're having sex with that you've stopped having sex with, or you're in a work relationship or you're in a family relationship, you know, typically the struggle is between those two polarized things, right? Should I stay or should I go? And that's the choice between judgment and separation or, you know, or judgment and separation between judgment and separation. Basically both ends of the spectrum are judgment and separation because on one end of the spectrum, should I stay this one choice you're separating from you. And on the other end of the spectrum, you're separating from everybody else, both of which is separating from you and everybody else. So lose, 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 lose situation. So, <laughs> so, um, so this was my other personal, I'm going to call it a challenge because it was intense for me, was to not separate from other people that I was actually choosing something different from. So, you know, it was a work situation and I chose something completely different. And for the two weeks that I was here, I just didn't separate from any of them energetically. Now, a lot of people will choose, when you choose to create your life, you're going to be choosing things that you weren't choosing before. That, that sounds really basic, but that's just true. Like when you choose to create your life, you're going to take your life in a direction that maybe no one will follow you and no one may understand what you're choosing and no one actually has to. And this is the thing about being the leader of your life is that when you're willing to be the leader, you're willing to go whether anybody follows you or not. So when you're talking about your personal life and not your business per se, um, you know, there's the chance people drop off. 
And you start choosing what you're aware of and towards the future that you're aware of and actualizing these energies that when you ask the question, what will my life be like in five years? Yes or no, you get a yes. What will my life be like in five years if I don't choose this? And you get a no. And you choose the thing that's a yes that doesn't make sense to anybody else. You're going to lose some people. I've always, and pock and pot always, but it's very, very likely that people will drop off. So the challenge for me has been in my whole life has, has been my unwillingness to lose people. Now that's kind of funny because I don't know if that's true because I've actually done a lot of these choices where people dropped off. But, but the difference between like this choice and maybe like getting divorced in the past, like pretty much when I got divorced in the past, I left that entire, you know how you create a little sort of family thing, community thing, friend thing when you're married? Any of you guys have been married and have been divorced maybe know what I'm talking about where like when you're married, you sort of have your, you know, your couple friends and your situations that you get into and your favorite restaurants and whatever. And when you get divorced, all that goes away. And um, both of the times that I got divorced, you know, I pretty much just left what we created and I went and started a new life. And that's one way of doing that kind of thing, right? But this time it's like, I, didn't, I don't have any desire to start a completely new, new life. I just, this facet of what I was creating wasn't working for me anymore, for whatever the reasons. And the way I chose to handle it created this thing where, you know, everybody had different ways of being with that in regards to me. And I had the choice to separate from all of them energetically, like just pull my energy out of their world, take it personally, and use that to like go away and do my own thing or just stay present with all of it, with all the awareness. And I think one of the things we, I think one of the things we do with separation is we, we separate from our awareness. Because what you're aware of in other people's worlds and in your world can be intense. It's like, I'm aware that somebody's got shit going on like instantly. And if I've got shit going on too, then it's very easy for me to jump to conclusion and go, well, their shit's about my shit, and now I feel bad because I've got, we all got shit. Now we're in a shit pile, then, you know, like, we aren't talking to each other, we don't like each other, we gotta get into a fight, you know, and I, I've really, 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 really been in the space of like, what else is possible? So even if other people choose to separate from you, you don't have to choose to separate. You get to just be there, and the way, the, the way that looks is like, hi. Hi. Like nothing's changed, everything's changed, but nothing's changed in the way that I'm here. You know, I'm here, I'm gonna keep being here, like none of that's gonna be different, and you get to choose whatever you choose. And there's a freedom and a strength. There's a strength required there, and there's a strength required for you. And I guess my invitation to you is like, and then I guess the third part of this is, you know, when, there's a, when there are situations where you're getting abused, Right? Like there's people that are actually using and abusing you and it's somewhere in your world you've decided you have to take it. And I would say that's scenario number three where you really get to have your own back and go, what really works for me here? And what's just not working for me anymore? And that's that moment where you get to go, hey, what energy do I need to be to change this? And you may need to be a cunt cow faggot bitch. And if you don't know cunt cow faggot bitch, man, that's one of my favorite phrases in access because it takes all those crazy words where if you said them one at a time to anybody, they'd be offended, puts them all together and actually goes, yeah, that's true. I'm just gonna, because what we're afraid of being is the thing that we won't choose. Like the thing that we've decided is wrong or bad or vicious or mean or awful, right? And, and sometimes those energies that you've decided are wrong, bad, vicious, mean or awful are just energies and are, are the very thing that you can use to change something. So that's the other question I want to put into your world is like, what, what, do you, what could you be willing to be for you today that would change what's going on right away? You know, whatever that is, what could you be willing to be? Maybe what you need to be willing to be is just wrong. Like, I'm really sorry. Like, what can I do to make up for the damage done? Even if you're not wrong. Maybe what you need to be is pissed off. Maybe what you need to be is um, you know, killing energy. Maybe what you, I don't know what's required for you, but the, I'll tell you one clue to getting a sense of what's required for you are the energies that you're avoiding being. If there's anything that you're avoiding being, those are the things you want to look at and go, okay, well, what if I was willing to be this? Would it change it? You know, if you're having a situation where you know it needs to change, like, what if I was willing to be this? Would it change it? 
I think I told the story before about my, my guy John with uh, Vodafone here in Australia. Like we pretty much got ripped off of like 11 or 19 something gigabytes of data. I'm not sure how it happened. And he basically he got on the phone with him and he was being so John, you know, he's like, I'm, well, you can extrapolate from this and be very logical. And they weren't giving him fucking anything because they don't care if they're a call center in India and they're doing their job and they've been told not to give anybody any, anything and not slamming India. I love India. I'm just saying they're so far removed from the situation that they don't care and they've got a directive, right? So I really like, you know, after a couple hours of him being on the phone, I'm like, what if you changed energies? What if you just lost your shit? Would that actually create something different? And it, sure enough, it did. He actually ended up getting what he wanted. And that's sort of a simple example because it's not like in your family or in your face with people that are paying you money with clients and things like that. But it's one of those examples where um, it's, it's sort of easier to look at. And then there's those times where, you know, you're in your family or, you know, you're in a work relationship or you've got clients that are, I've had clients that are abusive, right? People that have actually paid me money that want to judge me. And, you know, it got to a point for, and it's not a lot, but here and there. And I remember with one of them, um, you know, she was just throwing down judgment all left, right and center about what I was being, look, I cuss like I say a lot. If you don't like cussing, don't watch my shit. I cuss, all right? So she was in my program and she had a problem with that, but she kept like being really judgmental about it and loud about it. And I finally just said to her, I was like, look, you can either stop doing that or I'll give you your money back, but you cannot shit all over my group. Like that is not acceptable. And I was willing to be bad and terrible and, you know, cunty and all those things, but that was not going to occur in my space anymore. And so, so everything about your life is something that you create and you don't have to take any of it. You are the creator of it. And if you find that you're surviving a lot of your life or trying to put up with a lot of your life, that's where you just need to get really present with you and go, okay, well, this is what I'm choosing right now is surviving or putting up with or, you know, separating from and literally just what other choices do I have? What other choices do I have here that I've never considered? I'm serious. That question has been like my go-to question for the last two weeks, three weeks. What other choices do I have here? And that's when I would just like play with, you know, pulling all of your awareness into your body right now. And you can do it now and getting really present with you and going, what's my reality? And what would I like to create? And what would I like to choose? And then you're gonna just have to start choosing, right? Like, cause you know, there's no roadmap for this reality that you wanna create. There's no map for you. And there's no right choice and there's no wrong choice. And I'll tell you over the last two weeks, that's been really, really up in my face. of like, I don't have a map for what I'm doing here. I just have a sense. And this is the thing, you have a sense and it may be buried right now, right? Like it may be under a whole pile of projections and expectations and conclusions. Like it may be a little buried, but you have it. You have a sense of what you want to create. You have a sense of the future you desire. And that's the thing to never give up, never give in and never quit on is you and that. And every other thing about your life is something you get to choose to have or choose to change. And that's it. And that includes people, and that includes relationships, and that includes work. And you're going to choose some things that don't create what you thought they were going to create. But that's okay, because you have another choice in the next 10 seconds, and you can just make another choice. And if you don't spend all of your life energy on trying to figure out if you did it right, because, oh, trust me, you didn't. According to somebody, according to somebody, y'all are choosing all kinds of wrong shit, right? But if you, don't, if you don't take your energy to go to the past to try to ruminate on whether or not you did it right, then you get to actually use that energy to create your future, to create the future now. And yeah, you're so welcome. And I get it. This, I mean, this video, listen, listen, there's like four years of processing and clearing and choosing in this video. Like this is a condensed version of something that has taken me <laughs> a while to get to. So I know there's a lot in here and I know it's a, I know it's a big invitation and where could you start today? Like, where could you start today? Where could you start right now? What, how could you get present with you right now and really look at, okay, cool. I've made all these choices. I'm here now. What other choices do I have right now? So, and then.
behind the scene. If you like this, please share it so other people can find it. I'm so grateful for you guys being live, and I will see you next week.